we as it's, it's a very uh, uh, famous saying that coming events cast their shadows first so it's very important to identify the foot at risk just by examining the foot so unfortunately it's a taboo or uh, we don't see our patients uh, or don't allow them in clinic uh, coming barefoot so in my clinic i have made a custom that you should come you should, uh, as you come inside my clinic you put off your shoes you put off your uh, socks uh, so that i uh, they think it's uh, maybe uh, due to some other cause but the first and foremost important that i can examine the foot right uh, as the patient enters the uh, examination room or in my clinic so the pathways to foot ulcerations are many uh, it is uh, the uh, peripheral vascular disease the commonest is the somatic neuropathy or the sensory motor neuropathy and then autonomic neuropathy so this rothman model says that if any two factors are present they are sufficient to cause ulceration uh, as we know the peripheral vascular disease it, it was supposed to be the disease of the western country or the western people population but now uh, as with the investigations we found it it is very common in our population also the the sensory motor neuropathy causes the small muscle wasting and uh, the uh, insensitive foot the pain is supposed to be most uh, wonderful gift given to the human mankind mankind because uh, if you have pain you will uh, come early to the doctor and any kind of injury uh, to a sensitive foot brings the patient immediately to the doctor insensitive foot or painless foot they do not come to the doctor or the physician and then they keep on injuring their foot uh, on a regular basis so that leads to infection and leads to the other so the autonomic neuropathy is associated with somatic neuropathy in most of the patients and that leads to the, there is decreased sleeping dry skin is there callus formation is there due to the in a uh, inequal pressure distribution on the foot or increased foot pressure uh, most of the diabetic patients with prolonged diabetes duration they have limited joint mobility ldm we call it and that leads to inequal distribution of the foot pressure so the uh, this the, the all factors they lead to the uh, formation of callus dry skin particularly it cracks and there is a neuropathic ulcer or neuroischemic ulcer peripheral vascular disease directly can lead to the ischemic ulcer though it is rare uh, the combination of the neuropathy and the ischemic foot they lead to the neuroischemic ulcer the uh, autonomic neuropathy can also lead to the altered blood flow there is stagnation of the uh, the uh, poor venous return is there stagnation of the uh, blood flow is there and distended foot veins are there worn foot is there and this is at risk neuropathic foot and can lead to the pure neuropathic ulcer also so any two factors when they are combined in a single patient they can lead to foot ulceration so uh, as has been said the, the topic given to me is the, uh, the examination of the foot so examination of the foot is very important the american diabetes association uh, has uh, come up with a comprehensive diabetes foot examination the task force they developed this uh, as a protocol and one you inspect the foot and ask the history a good history will elicit that we uh, whether the patient had any ulcer in the past or is there any project there an ulcer is present or not the foot shapes the calluses you can see that at very prominent uh, metatarsal heads the, there are very common sites where they they develop this the area or the uh, hallux uh, the the uh, inter uh, uh, tarsal heads you, you, they develop the uh, calluses that can be seen the ulcers with these calluses 
with the combination of their dry skin and increased foot pressure, they crack and they tend to develop ulcers. Though these are the superficial ulcers. Then the shape, the particularly the hollux valgus, is and the, the small muscle wastings due to the motor neuropathy, they tend to develop the calluses over these and then they ulcerate. So this is the Sharpwood foot, the uh, very common example of the neuropathic foot. And due to the destruction of the bones, the abnormal shape of the foot, the abnormal foot pressure distribu distribution, they tend to develop this callus. So the, now we come to, to the second part, the prominent metatarsal heart clot, hollux valgus, muscle wasting, charcoal deformity in the neuropathic foot. The dermatological causes may be the uh, examination. We can see the callus, the iridema, and sweating. We can examine uh, by just by inspection the uh, iridema dust or the infection is there and the absence of sweating. The neurological the examination part comes the most important or very simple or very cheap investigation is just by. Uh, doing a 10 gram monofilament examination. So the, by 10 gram monofilament, you can uh, examine the patient at different points and you can write it down and very uh, certainly we can discern that this patient is having uh, peripheral sensory motor neuropathy or not. So uh, once it is detected, this foot is kept as a foot at high risk. So these examinations, they don't take much time. Uh, if one is very much uh, conversant, what to do? It can be done within a minute. It doesn't take much time. So the other test, the tuning fork test for the uh, uh, vibration for uh, uh, 128 hertz, we can see for the large fiber. And this is monofilament test, the pin prick for the small fibers, we can test the temperature and the sweating for autonomic functions, this neuropad comes, you say 10 minutes, you apply this neuropad and it turns from blue to pink. And this uh, shows that whether sweating is present or not. So uh, by this, you can also detect the autonomic neuropathy. So these are very simple tests. The, we, have, we do it for the proprioceptive sensation, for the large fiber sensations. Then motor function, the muscle wasting may be there. The, the increased foot pressure, we can examine by the, this Harris mat. So this increased pressure has been shown by simply by, by, by this uh, Harris mat, we can detect it. So though the, uh, this is not a quantification of the test, but you have a clear cut idea that this foot is at risk and the patient will develop callus and ulceration over this point. Another is for the Best, uh, the circulation for circulation, we can have this handheld Doppler. Um, you need not to send the patient for uh, the Doppler study or the color uh, Doppler for the limb vessels because he has to take appointment and he has to. Uh, uh, it, it takes uh, quite a uh, long duration or it consumes very much time for doing color Doppler test. But this handheld Doppler, we can uh, see the um, uh, circulation in the patient's foot. Uh, for ABI, we can go for ABI. These are the machines. They are available now, in, in, uh, easily available, and one can do for the circulation uh, of the lower limbs. One can go for the ABI. So though it is not required clinically in each and every patient, once you suspect that this patient is, might be having ischemic ulcer, you should go for ABI. Though the limitations are there. The classification of the ulcer, the most common classification, we go for the, this Maggot Wagner classification. If 0 to 5, we grade it. Uh, 0 means no ulcer. If 1 is superficial, 2 is deep ulcer, may involve tendons but not bones. The 3 is deep ulcer with bone involvement and osteomyelitis. The fourth is the localized gangrene of the particular one or two toes, while the fifth is the CVS one, the gangrene of the whole foot. This is the grade five maggot by the classification of maggot uh, Wagner. The most common classification, the maggot Wagner classification was 
deficient in telling the infection part. So this University of Texas Alcination classification came that it also takes the take care of the infection, whether infection is present or not, ischemia is present or not, or infection and ischemia both are present. So they uh, stayed it from A to B. Uh, the clinically, we can very uh, easily say that this foot is in stage A, grade B, 1, 2, or 3. So uh, superficial ulcer, grade 2, uh, uh, deep ulcer with tendon and capsules. The probe is there. My probe, you can uh, detect whether it is bone deep or it is involving joints also. Whether the presence or absence of ischemia and infection is there or not, or both are present. So this is very useful classification, University of Texas classification, but they do not predict the one-year risk of amputation, limb amputation, as my topic is save amputation. So one should be able to predict whether this patient is uh, going to have amputation or we can salvage the limb and what are the possibility of the revascularization. So for this, the, another classification has come up. This is the Wi-Fi classification. This is the most advanced classification. The Wi-Fi means the wound and ischemia, I for ischemia, and then FI is for the foot infection. These three components, when they are graded and when they are taken into the consideration, one can predict very easily. So this is a very useful classification. Uh, the, it has got three components. Rather four, the zero, one, two, three grades in each of the component, and the wound means no ulcer, zero absence of ulcer. One is the smaller superficial, like the uh, in my Wagner classification, deep ulcer in the wound or with the limited uh, digit loss. That, that is the uh, without without skin cover, the uh, uh, meta partial loss. Then deep extensive ulcer involving forefoot, this is the grade three, uh, midfoot or calcarean involvement, and with extensive gangrene. The ischemia is taken care of by uh, examining the ABI. So if Excuse me, sir, less than two minutes. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. yeah I, I will cover it. I will cover it. So this by doing ABI, we can uh, uh, classify five them, and then foot infection. So we, with this classification, uh, uh, it has been shown that uh, up to the uh, uh, sensitivity and sensitivity of the 90%, we can predict the one-year risk of amputation uh, and the possibility of the revascularization and the salvage of the limb. So the, uh, now comes the part, uh, the third part, once you have examined, the, how can you prevent so preventing from amputation, the key component is the patient's education. So what are the uh, things, at what points we can, or uh, we can emphasize patient uh, education, that if it is a patient is having sensory motor neuropathy, uh, he is on examination, we have detected that he is having decreased pain and proprioception. Then daily fit, uh, the foot at risk, we have examined, and then we can educate the patient for daily fit examination, check inside the shoes, don't bark barefoot, lizard uh, to with the hand, don't use blade, and a neuropathic foot, uh, the, the, the moisturizing, use of moisturizer for the uh, dry foot, then regular podiatry, well-fitted shoes, and in soles, then the uh, repetitive, uh, this, uh, uh, one should be able to avoid repetitive trauma and once the ulcer is there, if the patient is having foot ulcer, the address to the offloading, which is the main uh, thing which can prevent, which can heal the ulcers, foot ulcers and prevent amputation. Thank you. Thanks.